Hey guys, and welcome to math for today. Today we will be working on lesson 1.7, and it's kind of a continuation off of what we did yesterday. All right, now, today's objective says, I can solve problems by finding different combinations of tens and ones to represent two digit numbers using the find a pattern strategy. Okay, so we're gonna learn a strategy that's gonna help us today. The two materials that you need are your Go Math book, open to page 37, and a pencil. All right, so while you are getting your Go Math book and your pencils, I'm gonna go ahead and get to a different screen that we're gonna need. What we're gonna do today, I'm gonna show you kind of a review from yesterday to kind of get our brains working. Because remember, this skill can be a little bit tricky but if we're not concentrating and focusing really hard. All right, so I'm gonna show us the number 43, all right? Now if I think the number 43, the first thing that comes to mind is four tens and three ones. So I'm gonna show that now, one, one, two, three, four ten rods, and one, two, three ones, okay? If you look down here, we see that it is the number 43. Hopefully you guys can see that it's not too small. All right, now I'm gonna line it up just so that it's nice and neat for us, all right? So we have 43. Now, watch what happens if I take a ten rod and I regroup it into ones. Watch this. Watch what happens. Just you watch what happens right here and watch what happens over here, all right? So I'm gonna take a 10 rod. I'm gonna regroup it. Now, look at what happened down here. It still shows the number 43, okay? The picture looks different, but it's still showing an equal number or the value of this number is still the same, even though we showed it different ways. So now I'm showing three tens and 13 ones. Or I could show it as two tens and 23 ones. But my number stayed 43 because it's still the same. It just is using different base 10 blocks. Watch, I could do this one. Still the same, one 10 rod and 33 ones cubes, or we could do zero 10 rods and 43 ones cubes. So remember, the value stays the same as long as we make those equal trades. We take away a 10 rod and put 10 ones cubes. So as long as we're trading for equal values, the number stays the same, all right? So today we're gonna to learn a strategy that's gonna help us when we're solving these problems. All right, so you should have opened your book to page 37, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right, today we're gonna to be working with word problems and we're gonna to try to figure out what people need to find out and what information we have that we can use to solve the problem, all right? I'm gonna read the problem with you, and then we're gonna get started, okay? So here we go. Looking at the top of your page, it starts with the word Gail. Here we go, tracking fingers since gate three. Gail needs to buy 32 pencils. She can buy single box pencils or boxes of 10 pencils. What are some different ways that Gail can buy 32 pencils? All right. So the first thing we were looking at is, what is our question asking us, or what do we need to find, okay? We need to find ways she can buy 32 pencils, okay? We wanna know what are the different options Gail has to buy pencils, okay? Now, what information do we need to solve it, okay? We know that in our problem, it said that she can buy single pencils, so that means that Gail could just go into the store and she could buy 
32 pencils, just like one, two, three. She could buy single pencils, or she could buy boxes of 10. So she could buy boxes of pencils that have 10 pencils in each box, okay? Now, we're going to pretend that a box of pencils is the same thing as a 10 rod, okay? One box of 10 pencils is a 10 rod. And then we're also going to pretend that a single pencil is a one cube or that a small green ones cube, okay? So, let's look at some of the different ways that Gail can do this. Now, when Miss Gates solves these kind of problems, I always like to start with the easiest one first, okay? And for me, the easiest way to solve it first is gonna be to start with tens and ones. The most amount of tens and ones, okay? So, if I were gonna draw the quick picture, I know that 32 has three tens in it. So, I'm gonna draw three tens. One, two, three tens, and I know that 32 has two ones cubes, right? Okay, so that means that Gail could buy 10, 20, 30, or three boxes of pencils, and then she would need to have two single pencils, okay? So we see that on our chart. If she has three full boxes of pencils and two single pencils, okay? Now remember back to what Ms. Gates just showed you with the 10 rods and when we break them apart. What happens if instead of buying three boxes of pencils, she bought two full boxes of pencils Look at what's gonna happen to this box of pencils. You're gonna have to take it apart and buy 10 single pencils. So let's show that. I would have one, two 10 rods, and then instead of this third 10 rod, I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 pencils, and then plus the two that we already had, right? Okay. So now, we see that Gail has two boxes of pencils, and then she has five, 10, 11, 12 single pencils, okay? Look at what's happening to our chart. In the first column, it's going down, three, two. In the second column, the number in the tens place is going up by one while the ones place is staying the same. Let's see what happens next. What happens if I wanna take away another 10 rod? So that would mean I only have one box of pencils and then I'm gonna to need to buy even more single pencils, right? So I'm gonna pretend that I took this 10 rod and I'm gonna break it into 10 ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all right, did you do that on your page? You have one 10 rod, and then this 10 rod, we changed it into 10 one cubes. Then we also have to have these 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And then we have these last two. One, two, okay? So now we have one 10 rod, and let's see how many one cubes we have. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So now we have 22 single pencils. So she bought one box and like 22 singles. That's a lot. All right, there's one more way we can do it. Remember, look, this one's going down, three, two, one. This one's going up. There's a zero in the tens, a one in the tens, a two in the tens. Let's see what happens next. So now I have to keep all of these 10, or all of these ones cubes, but I'm gonna trade this last 10 rod for a ones cube. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So now she has zero boxes of pencils and she bought 32 single pencils. All right, so if we're looking at that strategy, we made our table and look at what's happening. In this part, in the number of boxes they're buying, it's going down. But the number of tens in our other side is going up. So we had zero tens, one ten, two tens, and three tens. All right, let's move on to the next page. All right, now let's read the problem. Here we go. Our problem says, so make sure you flip over to page 38. All right, so Sarah is putting away a pile of 36 crayons. She can pack them in boxes of 10 crayons, or she can just put them in as single crayons. What are all the different ways that Sarah can pack the crayons? All right, now, remember, if you want to do it like Miss Kate, the easiest way I've found is to start with the simplest way. So I know that Sarah has 36 crayons and she can pack them into tens and ones or just ones. So the first thing Miss Gates always likes to do is find the most number of boxes I can make and then have the least amount of ones. So if my number is 36, how many tens could I have first? We know there's a three in the tens column, so I could have three boxes of 10, and I could have six single crayons left, okay? Now, the next thing we're gonna do, remember, if we look at the problem we just did, the number went down one, and the ten or the ones cubes went up. So what happens if I don't need three boxes of ten anymore? I only have two boxes of ten. I need to have a number. I need to show that it's still going to be equal in value to thirty-six. So instead of two and six, I would need two boxes and sixteen ones, right? Because 20 plus 16 equals 36. Remember, we're looking for that pattern. When this number is going down, the number in the tens place is going up. So I could also show that Sarah might only have one box of 10 crayons, but I couldn't just use 16. I'm going to have to bump that number up because this 10 rod has now come over here. So now instead of one tens, we have and our last one, what if she had zero boxes of crayons and 36 single boxes? All right, now, just like we always do, I want you to try number two with your mom and dad. You can work that one with them or an older sibling. So you're gonna try number two by yourself. If you get it correct, you're gonna move on to page 39. If you don't get it correct, you might want to come back and watch this video one more time, all right? So, once you get number two correct, you're going to move on to page 39, and you're going to answer questions three, four, and five, all right? You're going to take a picture of page 39 and submit it to Miss Gates on Seesaw. Have a great afternoon.